up you guys this is Rob from a gay guy plays and today on the snapshot it is about 2 30 in the morning however that is not gonna stop me from covering the bloody mistress herself yes today we are taking a look at Garuda. Now, you can pick up Garuda's blueprints by completing the Vox Solaris quest out there in Fortuna, then continuing on to do the bounties to get the rest of her parts. However, if you can't wait to get your hands a nice and bloodied ASAP, you can always pick her up in the market pre-built along with a Warframe slot and catalyst for 325 plat. However, do be very aware there are a couple collections that you need to pay attention to. So the Garuda collection contains Garuda, the Balthory Helmet, the Cyandana, the Nagataka, listen, it's really late and I can't read names, and most importantly, the Bloodshed Sigil. So as you can see, this is what makes her all bloody and crazy looking. You can actually apply this to any Warframe, and during the missions, as they take health damage, they'll get bloodier and bloodier. Now, this is actually going to be a time exclusive they did say that they would be making the sigil available in a future event for people who cannot pay however this is the only way to get your hands on the sigil now so that's all available for 565 plat however there is also a Fortuna grand bundle and as you can see right here it contains everything that we mentioned below as well as the Batacore the Occupor and the Kreska and as well as um, some affinity boosters all for 960 so make sure you take a look at all of that before you make your final purchases. Alrighty, so kicking things off, let's go ahead and take a look at Garuda's base stats as well as her passive. So straight out of the gate, as you can see, she does have a good chunk of armor at 300, a little bit extra energy at 120, but everything beyond that is a bit basic with 100 health, 100 shields, and 1.0 sprint speed. Now, moving along, let's take a look at her passive. Well, actually, you're not going to be able to take a look at it because I am blocking it very conveniently. However, I will read it to you. As Garuda nears death, her damage increases, and she can slash with her talents if no melee weapon is equipped. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real fast. As you can see, I'm at full health. However, if I use her little, um, I think it's a bloodletting ability, it halves her health. Now, we're at 50% health, and she gets a 50% damage bonus. Now, as you can see right here, moving on to these orbs, all of that goes completely away because she has regenerated her health. As you can see, one more time, her health has gone down by half, and she gets that 50% bonus, and it goes away because her health has come back. Now, as you can see right here, we've got Garuda's talons ready to go. And the way that you activate this is by not having a melee weapon equipped. So as you can see right here, we're gonna go ahead and equip that Skana and there is no more Garuda talons. However, if we scroll all the way up and we go ahead and unequip that, boom, Garuda's talons appear. Now, as you can see, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats on this real fast. That's the current build that I'm using. I will be playing around with it a little bit, but uh, let's just look at the basics. Um, as you can see, it has a 10% critical chance, so nothing too fancy there. It has a decent crit multiplier at two times, but I don't really think it's anything to pay too much attention to. However, it does have a 30% status chance, which pairs really, really well with the fact that this is primarily slash based. So it's definitely gonna be good right there. Now the build that I am currently using on it um, is a basic like status build. I'm still playing around with it. This is what I'm kind of happy with for now. We're using Buzzkill to really, really push the slash procs on there. And then we've got some viral um, to go along with it. I'm experimenting with Weeping Wounds, seeing if I really, really need it. However, I might play around with some other things, but this is what we're going with. For now. Okay, so when it comes to Garuda's first ability, Dread Mirror, there is a lot to cover. So at its very, very core, Garuda jumps at an enemy, rips out 10% of their health, and then uses that to create a blood shield. So basically what the blood shield does is it acts very similarly to a vault shield that basically blocks all incoming damage from a specific direction. On top of that, however, there is also a blood orb that collects all of the damage that comes through the shield. This is where stats get a little bit kooky crazy. So as you can see right here, we have range. That is your engage range. So basically, you can go ahead and jump in an enemy from 43 meters away to rip out 10% um, of their health. So as you can see, health to shield. And that health is going to be registered up in the blood orb as the blood orb's damage. Now, moving along, you can see the duration. That's how long the shield is going to last. 
Um, then there is also a cool mechanic that if an enemy is below 35% health, you'll actually be able to instant kill them. Doesn't matter what level they are, as long as they are below that 35% threshold, you will be able to instant kill. Now, as you can see here, it also has a damage capture multiplier. Like I was saying, it creates that kind of bolt shield, right? So any damage that comes through that shield is multiplied by 3.4, at least for me specifically, for my build, is multiplied and then captured in the blood orb. Now, as you can see right here, there is a uh, charge damage. So basically what happens is as you um, hold the button down, because I know there's so much going on here, you can hold down the one ability. And basically what will happen is she'll pull down the blood orb and she'll go ahead and she'll charge it up. Um, so the damage slowly increases, that is a set amount, and then you'll be able to fire that blood orb off with any of the damage that you've collected, both from enemies shooting at you and that shield, the initial 10% that you get, as well as any of the charge up, and you'll be able to release it in a radius of damage. So let's just go ahead and jump in and see this thing in action, because I think it's a little bit easier to see than it is to kind of like explain. So let's simulate that. Oh, let's make myself invincible too, just just, just in case. Um, so as you can see, and this is what I love about this ability so much, is you can actually engage from the air. So watch, watch this, boom, right there. And oh my God, that's one of my favorite things about Garuda is a lot of her animations are just very, very fluid. Now, as you can see, as these guys are shooting at me, this thing is actually absorbing the damage. Another thing to be note of, to make note of, is if an enemy comes really, really close to the shield, it'll actually end up staggering them. So you see that? It'll just ram into them. Hi, how are you doing? Um, now, as time goes on, we are actually getting more and more damage into this shield. It doesn't really perform too well against super duper high level armored targets, but you know, for the star chart, ESO, um, all of that, it's fine. Now, one of the things to pay attention to is that this does persist even uh, beyond having a shield. You can actually go ahead, recast the shield, and collect even more damage for the orb. So it's not something that you need to use right away. It's something that you can just keep with you. And as you take more and more damage, the orb starts beating. You can almost say it's kind of like a, um, a, like a blood heart thing. And it gets these spines, and boom, as you can see, it does AoE damage. Um, which is pretty freaking fantastic. Now again, um, we can go ahead and engage. See, the fact is, it just she just feels very much like a bird of prey, and I kind of absolutely love it. Now, uh, at lower levels, this thing absolutely murders, and it's definitely something that I think um, more people should pay attention to when it comes to Garuda, because I think everybody focuses on her core a whole lot, and I'll show you exactly why when we get to that ability. Um, but her one, for the most part, is great, because it actually allows her to kind of cordon off areas where she's not taking damage and then heal up the rest. Where is this last guy? Oh, right there. The one thing that I will say about this ability too is it's a nice leap, so it gives her a bit of mobility. That's the one thing that I, I always want to point out with her because she does feel like she has a lot of mobility with this ability. Well, that's double ability right there. And boom. Not dead. But you know, uh, at this level with this much armor, they're probably not gonna be. Moving along, we've got Blood Altar, and this one is a little bit easier to explain, however, there is something a bit odd with it. But at its core, basically what Garuda does is she slides on in, she impales an enemy on what they call an Altar of Talons, and they slowly drain the health away from them to her and her allies. Now this is where things get a little bit weird. As you can see, we have the range, that's her engage range, kind of like um, Dreadmere, she also dashes in an enemy. Um, we've got the heal radius, which it creates the circle on the ground, so you can see very, very clearly exactly where you're standing in order to get the health. And then we've got duration, which is normal. And then we've got health per second and damage per second. This is where it gets a little bit strange. So basically what you're gonna be doing is 1% of the uh, damage to the enemy's health per second, and then you're gonna be siphoning off 42%. It's a weird number, 42% for me at least, depending on my specific build. However, it's kind of weird because uh, there's a lot of talk on the wiki that it's 42% of you know the enemy's health that you're stealing. 
it's not quite that. Um, the other thing that I do have to say is you can have a multiple blood altars at the same time and you can recast it Well, not really recast it. You can decast it. I think is a better terminology for it So let's go ahead and bring up that team again And basically what I'm gonna end up doing is whoop, Yeah, dash on in and there is your uh, Ultra of talents now um, what you're gonna see here is I'm gonna do a quick spin and we go from 425 to 470 so just keep that in mind because uh, what people were saying is it's based off the health of the enemy however I've tried this out on bombards I've tried this out on so many different levels and um, characters that it's just it does not seem like it's based off of that at all so I'm gonna go ahead and dash over here so as you can see, we have multiple. Now, uh, what I like to call this is the Venn Diagram, because what you want, oh no, the Venn Diagram, oh, no, there you go. Here's the Venn Diagram. This is where you want to be standing. And as you can see, we're being restored from two points at once. So what I like to do on my build is I like to have a little bit of duration and kind of like keep the whole area swarmed with these. So wherever you are, you're always gonna get healing from some point. Now, what I was saying is you could deactivate it, as you can see right there, um, in order to bring that guy down. And one of the reasons that you kind of want to do this is you can also hold the enemy in place, deal damage to them, and when you deactivate it, they take all of the damage that uh, they would have taken um, while they were in the altar. So if there's particularly a problematic enemy that uh, you want to incapacitate and take some health from at the same time, you can go ahead and do that and then uh, deactivate it right then and there. Now, remember when I was telling you earlier when we do our little spin and we're gonna show it real quick here um, as we get up in level. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and do our spin real quick and that brings us to 425 and we slowly go up. But as you notice, the amount of health that we regenerate goes down see 47 48 49 50 did you see how long it took us to get from there so again we go from 425 and we just kind of zoom through a little bit then as as we go up hold on let's do it so as we go up what ends up happening is the amount of health that we start regenerating per second is a lot lower so part of me wanted to say that it was a missing health however I, the calculations just didn't seem to be right when I was doing it with missing health. So let's do a little spin again. So as you can see, we went from 425 to 470. Just keep that in mind. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and have a fresh start with like a Bombard. All right. Let's do this. Let's get that. We're going to go ahead and not have Corrupted Lancers. And we're going to grab a Bombard real fast. So of course, a Bombard and a... Um, a Bombard and a... Uh, Lancer are gonna have a very very drastically different health rates, right? So as you can see we're 850, we do a spin, 425, and it jumps to 470 after that. And then just like this one with the rest of them, it starts to slow down as time goes on. You can even see now 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. It takes a very, very long time to get those last few percentages of health, and I honestly cannot tell you why. I do not know what it is. I think it might be just percentage of health loss that we're regenerating or something. I cannot tell you. I wish I knew. Um, but there's your little trick with the deactivating. You can take down uh, priority enemies like that. And don't forget, this is not just for you. It's for your allies as well. So share and share alike. Just create a bloody talon field. <laughs> so thankfully, Garuda's next ability, Bloodletting, is a lot easier to explain. Basically, it sacrifices 50% of your base health and converts it into energy. Now, depending on the amount of efficiency your build has, you can actually get more energy per point. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works real quick. I personally call it uh, doing a little bit of a spin. So as you can see right here, we've got her base health. She cuts it down by half. She gets her passive buff triggered, and then she gets some energy down at the bottom. Now, do be aware, she can go ahead and do it again, but she will bring herself down to two points of health for it. Now, she can't do it anymore because it says that you need more health, but do be aware, even if you are full energy, 
you can still do this ability cutting your health down. So you'll still be able to activate your passive, but you're not really getting any kind of benefit for it when it comes down to the energy game. So listen, if you want to do more damage, feel free to go ahead, but just be wary because there have been some times where I've got a little zealous with it and I've basically killed myself. Not killed myself as in like my ability killed me, but I put myself in a position where I killed myself. Just, just, just so you know, learn from my mistakes, okay? Don't be like me, be better than me, okay? Now, finally we arrive at Garuda's ultimate seeking talent, and let me tell you right now, I am absolutely jizzing over this one. Legitimately, at first, I didn't know exactly what was going on, but after we playtested it a bit on stream, I was like, holy fuck. This is insanely creative, and this makes her one of the best debuffing frames out there. So just the way that it all works is Garuda starts charging up her little ability, and it creates a little circle in front of her. So that's her aiming reticule, right? So you can kind of aim it left, right, and center, whichever you want, you want to go. And as you hold it down, it expands. Now keep in mind, when you cast it, all right? The initial cast cost is all that you need to pay, um, so it doesn't matter if you do like a small focused reticule or you do a really, really wide reticule, but basically what happens is over time the reticule starts to widen and basically you can hit more enemies with your seeking talents, right? So it just takes time is basically what happens. So she has these talents that function very much like Oberon's old renewal. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it before, but um, if you were there, for the way back in the day veterans that had seen it, um, Oberon's old renewal created these little wisps that literally just like trailed around and followed enemies around. So you don't even really need line of sight for this, but what happens is her ta talons like fucking fly out and they seek enemies. Um, they deal damage to them and do slash damage over time. So as you can see here, the damage that they've got listed isn't all that great. It's not all that crazy, but that's not really what we're looking for here, okay? You can see that we've got duration and bleed chance that has been added. Now, those are kind of, the duration, you know, is what duration is, but bleed chance is a little bit um, uh, obscure. So let me go ahead and show you how it works. So as you can see here, the Batacor doesn't have any slash damage in it whatsoever. It's got some puncture, it's got some magnetic, it's got some corrosive, right? So uh, just keep that in mind when you see what you see next. So let me make sure I'm all topped up on energy. Let's do some invincibility. Let's go ahead and simulate. Now, as you can see, I think we've got a bombard right there. Will it hit them from here? Will it? No, it won't hit them from here. I'm still a little bit out of range. But as you can see, I'm gonna get out of line of sight. I'm actually gonna be hidden down here. Boom. And those Seeking Talons have gone and found him, right? You're like, oh, little pings of slash damage. That's not a big deal. So I'm gonna wait for that slash damage proc to go away. But wait a second, what is this? Why is there slash procs on my weapon now? Because guess what? That percentage that you saw is a percentage of slash procs that you're gonna get off of this. That is right. It is absolutely freaking insane. All these enemies that are marked with Garuda's talons. All right, let's go. Let's 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 make several billies. Let's make several billies right now. So all of the enemies that are marked with Garuda's talons. Again, I'm gonna stay behind. I'm gonna stay behind Cyber right over here. And they're all marked, right? I'm gonna wait for those slash procs to go away. I'm gonna wait. So now we just have the buffs that are on, the debuffs that are on them. And, and do you see that? Do you see that? As long as they have Garuda's mark on them, they are potentially being slashed to death. That is right. I'm even gonna use the ultimate right there, or the big charge off of the battle core. And that is added at a space slash proc. So I want you to think about this. Basically, the way that I kind of handle myself with Miss, Miss Garu Garu over here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's simulate more of these. Um, I'm really too lazy to like go in and do them individually, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna do them this way. Is basically what I like to do is I like to go ahead, get my shield down, go ahead, put this up, do a little spin real quick. Then, as I'm defending myself against these momos. And by the way, just so that you know, the shield that she's got up, the splash damage from Bombards, nah, you still get hit from that. But, as you can see right here, um, I'm defended from them, 
Um, I'm getting my little health back, right? I can do a little spin to get even more health back, right? You know? And then they've, they've got the mark on them for, well, for a period of time. I was rambling too much. But as you can see, we can just stack all of these slash blocks on them, and it's nice and juicy. Oh my god, did you see that? Did you see that? I love it. I love it. Oh, friend, come back. Friend, come back. Friend, give me shield. All right, thank you. So as you can see, it this and okay, I have to pull out another weapon real quick. Like one of the weapons that I got super duper excited of. Picture this with sniper weapons. Picture this with all. Uh, picture this with your Vectus Primes. Picture this with one of my favorites, and I know that you guys are probably not like super duper excited. Like you're like, oh my god, Rob, this is not great. You can put it on the Baza, which is like a little bit slash overkill, but you know, you do you, whatever your life is. But uh, I love it with the Hema, because if you think about it, at least the way that I've got my Hema set up is viral, cor and cor viral corrosive and heat. So now we've got viral to half the health, right? We've got viral to half the health. We've, we've got corrosive to strip the armor. And then uh, we've got the slash box that come in with it. Oh my god, it's so sick. It's so good. It makes me so happy. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but the thing about this that I think is absolutely amazing is that it's so flexible. Like, whether you're using it with um, a sniper rifle, whether you're using it with a bow, whether you're using it with um, a fully automatic or a burst rifle or whatever, it pairs so well. And the thing is, these buffs last for you and your entire team. So your entire team, whatever they're doing, now they're also adding armor bypassing and shield bypassing slash procs to whatever they got. I'm just saying, super ridiculously juicy. Garuda definitely has a place in my heart. I haven't, um, I've played her a lot in, um, you know, like ESO. I've leveled her up there, but I do want to take her out in more missions um, in order to play her a little bit more. But so far, I am definitely having a hoot. I'm definitely having a hoot. So let's get two of these up here. Let's do a little bit of a spin. Let's go ahead and hit these guys real quick. Let's uh, take them out with our uh, beautiful, wonderful Kuma. Let's do a little bit of that action. And then uh, while we're here, let's uh, take this guy down. I think we can hit them while they're here as well. So as you can see, take that guy down. And then uh, get that one out of there. Let's do this action. I wonder, does this synergize? How does this synergize with this? Does this, does this do a thing? Does that do up? Oh, seems to really do a thing. <laughs> so Garuda, all in all, definitely a big thumbs up for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at the working build that I have with her right now. Now, don't don't look at the fact that it says six forma. It's really just five forma. I kind of fucked up on one of my formas. I, it, listen, I was exhausted. I had been streaming for like six plus hours and I accidentally put the wrong thing there. Now I'm running this with an Umbral Vitality and Umbral Intensify. I'm considering getting rid of the Steel Fiber and the Power Drift to see if I can just go ahead and manage to fit in the last Umbral mod. However, I didn't want to give away too much, you know what I mean? Um, because sometimes you can't fit it all in there. Um, so for me, I'm like, is it worth giving up a little bit of duration? Is it worth giving up some stretch? Like, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. Another thing that I'm actually very curious to try out with it is adaptation. Um, and see exactly what she gains from that. But right now, this is what I've been playing around with. I'm very, very happy with it. So we've got the Umbras in there. We've got growing power for a little bit more power strength. Power drift for power strength. Um because I like getting more health per second and all of that kind of stuff. I was actually um, thinking of, I wanted to keep Power Drift in there so that I could mess around with this, so that I could have either Ability Duration or I could have Ability Range when you use Augur Reach or Augur Message. Um, we've got Stretch in there to kind of give a little bit, I like a little bit of range on the Explosion for um, 
the, what is it called, the Doom Shield, her first ability. I like a little bit of range for that, and I like a little bit of range for her, um, her uh, Blood Altar ability as well. So, loving all of that, this is what I'm currently having fun with. Uh, you guys, feel free to be inspired, play around with this, see what else you like on her. However, that is my current setup, and it's definitely been working for me a lot. Um, but that about does it for me for now. This is your preview of Garuda. You guys go ahead and have some fun with her. Also, if, you, if you're watching this on the release date, be sure to tune in to twitch.tv backslash a gay guy plays this weekend. I'm going to be doing some giveaways that include the Garuda collection and the blood, uh, the blood sigil thing that we've got going on there, as well as some platinum codes and some other things. Plus, Twitch drops are active where you can go ahead and get Korra, Nidus, and uh, I think if they've got rifle ribbons in there, they've also got some like, you know, some like 7,500 credits, some night. Now, was it nighting? I don't know. Some weird shit. You know, some shit that you're like, kind of like, uh. There's also like a glyph display thing too. If you guys are interested, definitely check me out this weekend. Um, regardless, that about does it for me for now. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch yo Garuda. I'll see you guys next time. And hopefully I will get some sleep soon. <laughs> bye bye